Taking other drugs is like climbing a sand dune. Ah, taking LSD is like scaling Mount Everest. To the ones in the psychedelic world, it is called the aristocrat of the hallucinogens. It's no wonder one young girl was found walking on the street bearing a sign which read, Please help me. I've taken LSD. These are just a few of the tragedies, real examples and results of LSD, which one of our most esteemed senators said on the national broadcast the other evening, it presents a greater threat to our nation than the atomic bomb. So today, the press, the magazines of the newsstand, radio and television newscasts are all echoing the outcry of this new threat sweeping our nation, LSD, the mind. For many years, medical science has proven that the brain is electrochemical. Two simple chemicals in the human body, potassium and sodium, generate about a tenth of a volt of electricity, which gives the brain its normal functioning power. Man has found that these electric impulses enter the sound department of the brain giving hearing and they enter the sight department of the brain giving sight. But if man disrupts the normal function of the brain, either electrically or chemically, the electric impulse which normally would enter the sight department of the brain they may be diverted to the hearing or the sound department, causing weird and unusual noises. By the same token, the electric impulses on the auditory nerves, which normally would reach the hearing department of the brain, these may be diverted chemically into the sight department and cause flashing lights of most amazing nature. Many LSD users begin their experience with pleasant and good experiences. And then for some reason, these turn sharply into horror and into terror. Some of the students have told how sitting in the classroom long after their first taking of LSD, the faces of their fellow students suddenly became distorted and masked. few years has been an increase in the varieties of products that have been offered to our young people in almost every street corner. Peddlers with total disregard for the health and the welfare of their customers, trying to line their pockets with easy money. Sellers of LSD have professed a profit as as much as $3,000 a month selling this stuff. that we can spend days discussing this with you as well, but we have only this tremendous group, beginning with the blue-blue sniffing among the younger children, the blue heavens and the reds, the sicanos, the amphetamines, the barbiturates, the marijuana, the mescaline, the peyote, and finally LSD called the aristocrat. All of the hallucinogens. You know, man's been conditioned for it. One writer has so well stated, think of the millions of people who rely on tranquilizers to guide them through the frustrations of the day. Think of the millions of people who resort to energizers and pep pills. Think of those with sleeping tablets and the millions that resort to psychochemical called alcohol or whiskey. You know, seldom does any user of drugs remain content with the doses with which he begins. The reason LSD is having such a tremendous acceptance is because thousands of people have been conditioned by experimenting with the milder hallucinogens long before LSD became popularly known. This LSD, I repeat, is referred to the aristocrat of hallucinogens, the mind-expanding drugs because it's a hundred times stronger than some of the other drugs, even 700 times stronger than mescaline or peyote reason for the fantastic spread of the use of LSD is not only because its peddlers make a great profit, 
It's not only because the way has been paved in the lives of millions by the use of milder drugs and stimulants. Still another reason, and don't you smile at me when I say television. Federal Communications Commission has estimated that an average American spends approximately three hours per day in front of television. With a flip of the switch, he can transport himself into a world of make-believe. From the Arctic to the Orient, from the days of Julius Caesar and the Arabian Nights, to the battlefields of the Pacific Paradise. Our present world has become very frustrating and very dull to many people. Soaring taxes and a thousand problems from Alabama to Vietnam. One well-known doctor says our children are looking for an instant paradise. Think of the young people today that have no other model than live fast, look beautiful, be prepared to die young. The bomb they call tomorrow. One teacher was asked, if the students know that taking LSD might bring permanent brain damage, why do they take it? The reply the teacher gave was, well, if a student knows that tomorrow we may lose his head in Vietnam by an atomic bomb, he's not too concerned about the possibility of damaging a few brain cells with a trip on LSD. You know all some users, they have lofty ambitions and hopes. The drug or LSD will bring them some miraculous transformation, make them poets and artists or supermen, and the others looking strictly for escape. Escape from life has become too painful for them to bear. What are we going to answer these young people today? The young people that are crying out, live fast, look beautiful, die young. The bomb may drop tomorrow. Friends, you and I must find an answer. God, we do have a LSD makes an end run around Christ. It goes straight to the Holy Ghost. There is one basic experience that is expressed by almost every user of LSD drugs. It pertains to the ego or the self-conscious man leaving the body. The fantastic spread of the use of these mind-expanding drugs of today has caused some people to think it's relatively new that this is not the case. Leading disciples and the advocates of the hallucinogens like to compare themselves today to the ancient Buddha or Krishna or Muhammad. But regardless of the contrast or similarities of these may boys, we do know that man for thousands of years has resorted to whole galaxies of drugs taken from flowers or seeds or plants. And the effect upon the mind is what we call today psychedelic hallucination. The Brahmins for thousands of years ago used Soma, the drug that is taken from a creeping plant. For over 400 years, natives of Mexico have had the sacred visions by eating mushrooms called sacred mushrooms. The Aztecs call them the flesh of God. One writer says, the drug can induce religious experiences indistinguishable from the experiences that occur spontaneously in the spiritual world. So we begin to develop this amazing picture of the battle for man's will, or synonymously speaking, the battle for the mind. Let's look at the mind for a moment just as its physical value physical organ. It is perhaps without question the most miraculous thing in the natural world of the universe. As science and learning have developed in high places over the last two decades, man's wonderment has continually increased as to the phenomenon of his will or his brain. That little three pound point three substance of pink, grayish, jelly-like matter encased in the three envelopes and the bones in your cranium that operates on a tenth of a volt of electricity is an amazing substance. It is comprised of 13 billion brain cells. It has the storage capacity of storing within it during your lifespan 15 trillion facts. In other words, if you transformed everybody on Earth to a fact, your brain could house the population of 5,000 
Your brain is divided into three departments, the subconscious, the intermediate, and the recoverable memory. The subconscious part of your brain in itself is exceedingly amazing, almost to the point of being mysterious, strange. Without any dictation on your part, it carries on silently, continually, the electro-impulses of the electromuscular organ called the heart. Your old heart will beat today 103,389 times. Drive the blood through your body over the labyrinth of veins and arteries, which in themselves represent 40 to 60 to 100,000 miles, depending on the size of your body. That means the blood will flow in your temple today a total distance of 168 billion miles. <laughs> All the way to the sun two-thirds of the way back again. The blood flow in your body in one day, so the old heart keeps on beating because the subconscious brain never misses in its faithful duty. Your brain doesn't tire because it's not muscular. You can use your brain intensely and say, oh, I have brain fatigue, you can. It'll wear out your body, your body will become weary, but your brain is not muscular, it's electrochemical. The subconscious, I say, is fantastic. It sends lightning-like messages out to your body over the brain nerves. The thinner ones being one twenty-five thousandth of an inch in thickness, and over these the messages go to your closer organs at two-thirds of a mile per hour, but your larger brain nerves are one twenty-five hundredth of an inch in diameter, and over these the messages race to the farther extremities of your body at 300 miles an hour. You can wiggle your first toe and your first finger simultaneously. And the brain organizes this dispensing of knowledge. 